Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into Warplan Pacific and our PBEM challenge with Bonsai. And I have to apologize, uh, there was about a week there I didn't get a turn back from Bonsai, then I was gone for a little while. Um, and we just didn't get uh, turns turned back and forth. I was actually getting quite afraid that this game may go away, but it didn't. Uh, I did eventually get that turn. Uh, because of you know where I was at the time, I had to just turn the turn back and not do a recording. I wanted to keep the game going. So you've missed one turn of action, and unfortunately, a lot happened that turn. I mean, a lot happened. Of course it did, right? Um, but anyway, it's January 3rd, 1943. So we've now clicked into 1943, and uh, we'll go around the map. I mean, we'll talk it all out and everything that's going on. I think you'll be like, wow, okay. Uh, and we'll get back up to speed about what's happening. One thing that's happening is we are slowly but surely losing Australia. And uh, first of all, we'll look at the advancements. Uh, the Soviet Union, who cares? Doesn't matter. Uh, U.S. First Army Headquarters, this was MacArthur, he surrendered out in Australia. So did Blarney, who was the Australian command, he surrendered as well. We also had a division overrun in Australia, and we'll go talk about it and what Bonsai does so well that no other player that I have ever played, like I said, he's the only person that's beat me. Um, I've never seen anybody that uses air power as effectively as he does. And now we could get into a debate about whether it's too powerful when it comes to shore bombardment, but when he gets it lined up for shore bombardment, you just can't stop it. And that also, uh, you know, kind of should uh, guide us of what we should do is we start to go on the offensive. And we have landed in India because I finally said, look, if we don't go now, we're never going. So we, we got to get going. So anyway, we'll get to all that. Uh, Allied oil production is up again. Uh, the U.S., of course, could just crank out oil. Uh, you're never going to run out. Just don't even worry about oil in the U.S. once you get past the first six months. Uh, U.S. submarines in the field correct more problems with the Mark 14 torpedo. This is what I was talking about. We've now advanced our submarines up to a 1942 level. They started off in a 41. They're now at a 42, and we get a plus one surface combat because they finally fixed the dang torpedoes. And so now our submarines are actually you know, a fairly uh, fearsome fighting force. And as a matter of fact, they sunk some stuff and uh, we'll get back to that. Uh, fleet that we have fleets that have low supplies, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, as we get down here, we sunk Japan's uh, seventh torpedo division. That sunk. We also sunk his uh, submarine squadron, the I-23. So we did get a little bit of joy uh, so that's good. Uh, Australia has no oil stockpile. He did try to hit our Merch Marines with air, but uh, was not successful. All right, so it's January 3rd, 43. Let's go, let's go ahead and look at our warnings. Australia has no oil, and now you can see the situation in Australia. He's completely moved down this road, and a big part of that is these two big task forces are just bombing the living daylights out of us. They're wearing down our effectiveness, and then when he attacks, we immediately surrender or get overrun, and it is just powerful stuff. Uh, you know, getting the one air unit overrun at Sydney really hurt us. Uh, it was brought up in the comments. I did attack out of Sydney. If I had to do it again, I would not attack. Effectiveness is so important in this game. And when you attack, you lose quite a bit of effectiveness. And so you've got to be very careful when on the defensive uh, doing attacks, because if he then bombs you, he can take your effectiveness to zero and your guys just get overrun or they surrender. So anyway, uh, unit has no supply. We've got some supply problems out there. This is India and the situation in India now. Now you may say, why is this American unit here? Uh, I brought it in here because he had an air unit there. I landed and we overran that air unit. And so we have overrun a Japanese air unit out here. Uh, you can see we've landed. We've got troops on the beach. We've got uh, cruiser, light cruisers, destroyers, submarines. We've got carriers over. We've got a lot of stuff over here. <laughs> and so we'll get back to it uh, eventually. Uh, unit has no supply source right. Okay, all, none of these do. Although I did give them a little beachhead supply this time. 
Um, unit has no or low, right, right. Okay, so all of these. And then these guys are low, but we're going to play that kind of dangerous game of having them out here anyway. And then we had some partisans. Okay, we'll get back to that. Combat log. Let's go back to last turn. Partisan activities, we had it in China. Of course we did. Uh, so out in China, we the partisans are active. And then down here by Shanghai, uh, then up in India, we had partisans active as well. And then you start to see what he did in Australia. Ground strike. So, you know, again, you don't see any losses, but it, it degrades their effectiveness. Then he carrier struck out here on the Canadians. Okay. Then he just overran this unit. They had nothing left. This was MacArthur, Douglas MacArthur, you see right there. Tend and surrender. Just... Just threw up his hands uh, out here, even though he was a 10. And this is just, uh, you know, he, you can see here what the deal is. 31st Army. So we only attacked him with one army, but he had naval bombardment from that group. He had carrier ground support. He had two other air divisions in, and MacArthur and guys just said, nope, no more bombing for us. We're out. Uh, ground strike up here. This was into the Australian headquarters. So we hit them with the 12th Air Division. Then land combat, he he hit them with, you know, a bunch of stuff, obviously, plus air divisions, and they also just surrendered. So, wow, way to go, commanders. We had two commanders that just surrendered. Uh, all right. Uh, land combat, he then overran this unit, which was also degraded uh, and had been degraded in previous turns. So he hit that, overran it, goodbye. Uh, ground strike, he started hitting the Canadians, but the Canadians actually held strong. In the current turn, partisan activities, we had convoy attacks out here in the convoy lanes, all right? Surface combat. Uh, he had the 7th Torpedo Boat Division here. Now, I did not know this was here, and, I, and when you try to put a landing group on top of that, it says, you cannot land where an enemy is. So I said, aha, he's got an enemy here. <laughs> so I knew he had something here. I moved the uh, light cruiser group over here. I moved the destroyers over here and we sunk the seventh torpedo boat division. Then we had more surface combat. He had a submarine squadron here. We hit that with the destroyer flotilla. Even though he ambushed us, he took two damage. And then the second time we hit him, he sunk. So we did uh, sunk, sink a uh, submarine squadron and we also got rid of a torpedo boat group which uh, bonsai uses very effectively to to blockade ports essentially um okay that was the combat log we've looked at the reports uh we don't have anything to build on the on the war screen we did comment or i did comment last time for the us when it comes to advancements you'll see we're close to large warships when we get some more battleships naval air training is almost up and eh, we're a ways away from assault for the us uh, we're very close to warships going to a 43 that'll be helpful carrier operations <coughs> are only three months from going to a 1944 and uh, that obviously is incredibly important. Uh, Soviet Union doesn't matter. Uh, the Chinese will eventually get up to a 1941. Let's deploy, if we, if we have anything to deploy, uh, the Brits have nothing. The Americans, meanwhile, we get a new carrier, the Essex. So let's go way over to the U.S. West Coast. We'll just put that down in San Diego. That's where the U.S. like to uh, have its carriers staged out of. Uh, we also have a new fighter group of planes, so that's super exciting. Next uh, turn, we get a light carrier, and we also get another interceptor squadron. And then, as you can see down here, we get the Lexington. We get more fighter groups. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff coming in. The Yorktown II, the Wasp II, the Bella Wood. A uh, lot of fighters, a lot of aircraft. So things look dire, I'll, I'll admit. I mean, if we lose Australia, we're in a real world, world of hurt. If we could take back Bombay here, though, we've got a fighting chance. Um, well, we're after it now. So, <laughs> so let's go. Let's go. Uh, Rightio then. So we've deployed that. While we're over here, then we'll just take the carrier out to Pearl Harbor. And we'll put it in there and we'll take the aircraft. We'll put those on transports. We need them and we'll take them towards Australia. They may end up in India. 
Uh, we've also got this submarine here. He's kind of all by himself. You can only put five submarine squadrons together. We've got six, and so here he sits. Uh, we probably could put him out here. I don't think it really matters, but I'll put him out of Pearl Harbor just so I don't lose track of him. Did I have another one out here? No, I've just got, you know, uh, cruisers, destroyers. That does remind me, though. I think I'll take... So the Brits have 21 in oil now. Um, I was thinking, you know, he's immediately, he's probably going to take one carrier force and move it towards India. And he's going to want to leave one here to finish off this job. That being the case, I may want to start getting down here into the South Pacific and blockading islands, whether it be Suva or otherwise, uh, interdicting them at least. I may do that. Eh, I'll think more about that. I'll think more about it. Uh, convoys, we're still just going US to UK. I'm trying to get as much stuff in there as I can. Um, you know, they're up to 21 oil. I'm going to just keep trying to pound it full if I can. Um, yeah, let's look. How many merch marines does the U.S. actually have? It's down to 12. Now, we built another 10. Um, we probably, I don't know. We probably don't need any more if no more gets sunk, but we know more will get sunk, so okay. Uh, U.S. has 476 stockpile now. Uh, China... Not much. Australia, obviously not much. Canada. Commies are close to building another unit. That'll be helpful. All right. We'll come back to the build queue for the U.S. But let's get about what we want to do this time. So, you know, I've already uh, attacked these units up here with the submarine, uh, the destroyer. We already did this. We need to move this unit. Um because we have just got to get into Bombay. Um, so let's just go after it. I mean, we need to hit this and then really this American unit needs to come in here. Now I threatened to go out here. He had two units here. He had this one and the one at Bombay. He obviously had another one over here at like Hyderabad that we just couldn't see. And then he wheeled this Marine unit from somewhere, or ra wheeled it, railed it from somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, now, what I'm hoping is we do more pressure here. He's going to pull out of one or two of these because I've got three more landing transports here. Uh, again, I've got the carriers up here. Now, they've only got one more turn of supply. Uh, that's the problem with having to bring them all the way from Pearl Harbor is you use up two supply just getting over here. Now, I want him to be far enough from the Whirly Gig that when the Japanese come through, let's just say they came through there, we're more than five hexes away from him. One, two, three, four, five. So I'd like to be up, let's say here. That way we can pretty much bomb anything. And if we need to, okay, so let's do this. Let's move him there, all right? And let's turn that on to hit units. And I want to start degrading the effectiveness here immediately. So let's carrier strike there. Let's try that again. Carrier strike there. We lose nothing. He loses nothing. But he probably loses some effectiveness. I'd also like to bring this battleship group up here. That should work. Let's bring this battleship group up here and this battleship group this battleship group here. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff here. When he comes through the Whirly Gig, though, we could always just throw it right back through it, right? We can go right back through it. So I'm going to have all of this around here. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to attack right here. Now, it is across the river, but I think, yep, and we scoot him back. And boy, did we need that. Now, he could move there or he could move 
there, there. Could he get up here? No, he can't quite get up there. Okay, it's all right. Um, I also want this guy to actually do some bombardment. What I'm hoping for next turn is to be able to, so I am going to move him there. Right, and let's move him there. All right, so they've got nothing left. Their effectiveness is going to go down immediately. Now, he needs to scoot around here. I may just leave this guy on the beach, although ugh, I don't love that. Um, what I'm hoping now, you know, this isn't ideal but we should be able to knock him out next time very quickly and then between carrier the same thing he does to us carrier strike bombardment uh so on so forth i think we also supply beachhead who would he be supplying here oh he could supply this unit why don't we do that for this turn we're not going to be a uh yeah okay so he gets some supply there i got him supply last time so he's got three three he's only got two but that's okay um that works that works for one turn now again these guys don't have much supply themselves so we've kind of worked around him here uh these guys could get out of here next turn or they can just do beach supply potentially uh oil or resupply no we don't care about that all right so we've got that there that there uh we've got our battleships up here i mean we've got a lot of ships obviously if he comes through with both carriers next turn uh we're gonna have to scramble but if he only comes through with one carrier i'm gonna try to duke it out with him i think we're okay now i've got two with anti-air screen so we'll see what all he comes through with now this guy has got to get on the move because we got to get him over to a supply source i'm sure they're going to try to move up and around this way but i might be okay with that what does he have here unknown ships two ships okay I'm going to move him this way. I think that puts the most pressure on. I'm going to leave these guys out here for a turn. Now, I had thought about having them land here. We could also go try to land something over here. We've got a 10 of 10, a 10 of 10. I think these are, oh, this is a 20 of 20. I was thinking about landing them up here, like, to, you know, taking Tavoy or Mole Mine. Uh, hell, we could even get down here we really wanted to get across to Cota Baru or something crazy like that. Uh, but I think I'm going to let them sit here for a turn because as you can see, they could, like if this comes out of Mangalore, they could land there. They could land here at Madras and help this guy out and eventually try to take Madras. Um, we could, you know, if he gets crazy and wheels other stuff out of here, uh, we could take these guys and go a lot of different ways. I was also tempted to bring him all the way around here because he doesn't seem to have a lot out here uh, or even down this way. Oh, whoops. I mean, down this way, we whack. I mean, there's a lot of points available right up here. So I was thinking about maybe doing that, uh, but we'll see how he reacts to this. I think I'm going to leave these transports here. Uh, that reminds me, do we have any other British forces to bring? Not really. Well, I mean, we do, but it's a 20. We could split this. I guess we will. Uh, we need as much on transports and raring to go as we can get. So let's bring him up the map. Um, let's put him in stealth mode. For now, I'll just put him right there. Uh, we'll see what happens. Don't love doing that, but... Let's put that there. Uh, we'll alt this. We'll put them together and we'll get the uh, commander out. I mean, obviously, we don't have any command over here. We really need a commander for the U.S. We, you know, MacArthur has now been uh, destroyed. And a, ma a matter of fact, maybe that's something we'll build this time. Down in Australia, I'm not going to move at all. Uh, I'm going to try to keep as much effectiveness as I possibly can. This unit, we could try to get crazy and land out here somewhere, but I'm not going to. Uh, we could actually even put a little pressure on Sydney. You know, I, I could land here with him. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do instead is push him through to India. 
because we're kind of all in in India. If this gambit doesn't work, we may be at a point where concession is possible. Uh, off to Australia he goes. All right. I don't think we're close to that. I mean, I think we'll be fine. We'll take Bombay. Or at least I hope we do. I mean, with all this, if we can't take Bombay against this, we're in uh, dire, dire straits. Uh, and I'm not talking about the band. Uh, money for nothing. Um, yeah, we're not going to move any of this. That went through to India. We've got planes uh, coming that can go further through to India. I think I do want to go down and try to interdict some of these ports. I mean, we've got a lot of ships. We may as well use them. Uh, the Irma, I don't want to use any of the Brit ships, though, is part of the problem. So let's get off of all of this. Let's take the Indiana. And we'll take two flotillas. So let's take these guys. We'll put them in stealth mode for now. Don't let me forget to unstealth them. Uh, and we're going to take them down towards Suva. We'll put them down there. They're going to try to block that port. And that way, maybe we can pull some of his carriers off. I, I doubt he'll do that, but that's fine. Then we'll just take Suva. That's I'm okay with that. Uh, that also means in a time or, or a turn or two, I'll need to put something on a transport. If we look at the victory locations, Suva is actually, you know, Suva is worth as much as all of Australia. Australia only has one victory point location. That's Canberra. Uh, but we've got a lot of forces in there I don't want to lose. But we're going to come down here and pressure Suva now that we've uh, got a little something going on with him. Um, okay, so there's that. Let's go back to the U.S. West Coast. We'll just go kind of... Uh, east to west on this map anyway. Uh, strategic bombing is just not coming into play until we take something where we can strategically bomb off of it. we got three divisions back here. I'm not going to take those off the main locations in the U.S. Back here we have two carriers now. We have the Essex and the Hermes. we got a lot of British battleships, battle cruisers, cruisers. I mean, these are all Australian or U.K. Um, back here... Right, there's nothing out here. Obviously, we lost New Zealand some time ago, but we're going to come back after it. Uh, you know, the reason I'm not moving any of this is because I want its effectiveness to stay up. Right now, it's at 72%. He'll probably get absolutely bought, but I guess he's probably going to come after this unit or this unit first so he can get more around Canberra. And that's why I decided we got to get going to India. Let's go look up in China and see what's going on in China. Not a whole lot. He's just completely sat down in China. He's taken a lot of forces out of here, I think. Uh, we could even start trying to attack back here in China. Uh, but I don't want these guys to get worn down at all. That's the only thing. Uh, one to one there. He is a 30 of 30. Let's just blow this guy out if we can. No. Okay. We could try that guy, but I don't want to. How about four to one? All right. Off he goes. And maybe we can start kind of expanding out here a little bit and pushing back. Now, the uh, Chinese are going to be getting, or the communist Chinese are going to be getting another unit soon. So. Hey, let's let's start blowing him away. And if we can go this way, that's fine. Let's do it. Uh, I don't want his effectiveness to get too low, though. 71%. Again, he's only a 14 of 20. He's not really rebuilding. It's 1 of 1. It's 2 to 1. This is only a 3, though. Ah, shit. Let's just start going for it. we got to get a little offensive here. He took a 1 loss. Now he took a 1 loss. 3 to 1. All right, he took another loss. So let's, you know, if we can get offensive out here and start pushing back towards Cyan, now, of course, he can rush a million things up here. So it's not like we're going to get very far, but it's kind of fun to get a little offensive from time to time. Uh, he's all behind the river here, so are we. We could, you know, start moving something out here, uh, like a little stronger bit of a unit here. We've also got a... Another unit, this guy is actually a little bit stronger still. Uh, we've got these guys. That's only one-to-one, -one, though. It is raining out here, so we're not getting the best of odds. Wow. It's only one of three because it's across the river in the rain. Ouch. 
Uh, nine, you know, he's got nine and eight here, but this guy is as strong as we could possibly make a Chinese unit at this point. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, I would like to start putting a little pressure on him out here, though. I mean, he's not, you know, obviously he's gone garrison mode. He's trying to save up points for other places. He's got a lot back here in reserve. Uh, but I think for China, that's probably good for now. I mean, we're hanging really well in China. Um, we got to take this. And these guys, like I said, are going to be low of supply. We're going to attack one time in next time. Try to get this guy around. Uh, try to get this guy off the beach. We may attack with both of these guys into him. Yeah, he can't attack into Bombay itself, but he can attack this way, and maybe we could blow this out of here. And then by the time his uh, carriers get over here, we'll see what happens. This unit, you know, we're just kind of busting up some of the rail here. We'll try to cut all the way across here, though, and link up. He's about that far away to getting to supply, but I'm sure he'll wheel out this way. But when he does, we're going to come right behind that and try to take Madras. Or if by good chance he gets out of Calcutta, I say by good chance, by good fortune, I should say, he decides uh, he's probably got nothing else to land. I'm going to come over here. We'll land up here in Calcutta and Chittagong. Uh, let's make sure I don't have any other forces to move. Yeah, I'm really happy with China. Uh, I think we were in good shape in Australia for quite some time. I should have put more in there. Maybe some of these British forces that I had sitting around forever. Uh, and also, I think I needed to build more air and get it in there. Uh, oh, by the way, I think we can take Darwin this time. I almost forgot about that. Hey, look, we control Darwin. Fantastic. It's not worth any points, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Brits, no... Okay, that all looks fine. The Brit, the UK in general has no more. Uh, we'll get a new Canadian unit, but it'll just sit here. Um, yeah, I don't think I can do much better. I do think that we can take Bombay next turn, even with just this one unit, potentially, because we're going to carrier it. We've got uh, the bombardment. That's the plan, anyway. I've learned a bit from invasions from him, I'll be quite honest. Uh, this just looks bad. But anyway, uh, I think let's go up to the build queue. Uh, UK has nothing to do. The US support. We probably need some more landing ships. So let's build one of those. Let's build another one of those. Let's also go over here and let's build a headquarters. Uh sure does it really matter not really let's purchase one of those 316 234 let's purchase an infantry core large that leaves us with 82 we could do a division let's do that as well okay so now the u.s has four you know at this point in the game starting in 43 the u.s can build so much stuff it's it almost becomes obscene now you may say man are you in terrible shape well sort of i mean we're playing for points and so we probably are in terrible shape but by 1944 we will be pushing him back on all fronts so then it just becomes a matter of can he hold out longer than we did he had the advantage up to this point the advantage is starting to shift in our favor from production. We get naturally get a bunch of carriers in, et cetera, et cetera. And as that happens, the initiative switches to us. But has he taken too much now for us to come back to win? We shall see, and it's going to be fun to check out. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.